Well, I'm Paul Taze, um, an artist up the North Canyon, you might say. My studio is uh, in Staten here, 349 North uh, 3rd Avenue, and um, my home is up above Gates, up in the sticks there. I'm surrounded by BLM and State and timber ground and uh, wild country there. My neighbors are elk and cougars and bear and whatever you have, but I come down here to be around people once in a while, and so that's what I do. And uh, um, I was given some abilities, what I call soul tools, which we all have in one form or another. And uh, mine happened to be in the form of visual art, uh, plus storytelling. I do a bit of storytelling and yeah, some other stuff too, but uh, talking about art right now. Um, what you see probably in your camera right now is uh, me working on a ch chunk of wood. I call it my firewood art because I figure if you don't like it after a while you can always burn it for firewood. But uh, it's been a good income for me. Uh, my my uh, wood um, takes on its own character or keeps its own character or I try to. So I see a tree in this here a chunk of wood uh, the shape of it. I also see landscape, so I go kind of a two, dim two um, it's not a two-dimensional, it's, a, um, it's a, the subject in the wood itself and the subject that I draw into the wood, and sometimes they're one and the same, sometimes not. But this one happens to be kind of the shape of a maple tree, which is what this wood is, is a big leaf maple. It has a little bit of burl in it, so I mix that into my leaf work. I see landscape going across it here. Uh, so I'll work that into it and down here maybe some more trees or something I think it's just going to be a tree scene if anything I might take advantage of little spots up there for a couple birds or something but uh, I don't like to fill the whole wood up sometimes I end up filling a lot of it up because the wood itself is so beautiful and I don't want to hide that so I don't use a paint this is a pen and ink and um, and then it's an oil-based pencil, a special pencil that I use to rub into the wood so that the wood continues to show through. The color doesn't sit on top of the wood, but you can actually see the grain through the wood. Uh, so you never lose that character of the wood. That's, that's what I like about the wood. This here is big leaf maple here. The big one you see up there is Pacific yew wood, which is probably the oldest wood, I mean the uh, hardest wood in Oregon. Uh, the old settlers and farmers used to use it for fence posts before the steel posts came along and the treated ones. And um, so like one old farmer said, um, that one post would outlast three post holes. So that's how hard they are and how, how, uh, how, how long they preserve. This here's a black walnut chunk. I framed it with black walnut also. I'm not sure what I'll do yet with it, but it definitely has a character to it that you're going to have to pay attention to. I don't try to get tricky, you know, I could, but I never have really done that. In other words, there are figures, there's odd things in wood, and here you have two eyes and a beak and some kind of a weird, you know, you, you could come up with something really weird here, but I, I like to stay with uh, the things that aren't quite that weird. Uh, Pacific yew wood here with a chunk of black walnut that I'll mount on the bottom. So that's my wood stuff. You see a little one up there. I love the colors in that. That's a, that's a scene along Thomas Creek. Um, and then I work in acrylic and watercolor. And, um, and I probably sell equally, maybe a little more on the wood side, but probably more money on the acrylic. And uh, because I do quite a bit of commission work, which ends up being some large pieces sometimes. Uh, commissioning is an interesting thing because uh, you never know what to expect. And obviously, if they're going to come in here and look at my artwork, uh, most of them are intelligent enough to know that I have a certain repertoire that I appreciate. And uh, so they stay within that, but not always. And some of them very apologetically say, well, can you do this? And uh, sometimes I say yes and wish I didn't. But most of the time I get into wonderful stuff. And uh, I would say the majority is the landscape, special places. Uh, I had one big one, a six foot one that I did that was uh, of Mount Jefferson. It had to be from the east side, I mean the north side rather, and it had to have morning light on it. And they wanted it, well, the mountain didn't, wasn't completely buried in snow. They wanted the color of the rock to 
you know, that contrast of rock and glacier, and, and um, yet they wanted the morning light on it. So I went up in September and I hiked in on the, uh, the Pacific Trest Trail from, um, from Brighton Bush, hiked in five and a half miles and kind of just bushwhacked, as they call it. Uh, from there, another three and a half miles, kept going up this ridge, going up this ridge uh, that par parallels uh, Parks Canyon. And uh, thinking that eventually it's going to open up and hopefully I'd get far enough around where I'd get some east light on the mountain. That ended up being quite an adventure besides coming up with a piece of artwork that satisfied them. I ended up on Indian territory and um, spent, uh, spent some time up there overnight and um, getting some uh, sketching done and photographs and then working in my studio off of that. A real remote area, incredible experience. Uh, I've done rivers, I've done people's homes, I've done uh, um, portraits, I've done groups. I don't like big groups. I'm not a Rembrandt in that sense, uh, but I probably would do it if somebody paid me enough because it would be quite a challenge. I've got a few years left in me, so I, I may, I'm amazed at these here masters that seem to have no sense of time and they just they took on a monumental task and uh, just did it, plugged away at it until they died, you know. On the way out, I was thinking, Paul, what is your message in your art? And I've asked myself this before, and I've had the answer, and the answer is I want to express the beauty of, of nature and of people and of, of landscape and of seascape and all this, and I want to share that. I have an appreciation for it. I have a love for it. I want to share it. And then I thought, well, you know what, is there anything a little deeper than that? You know, other than just that appreciation, which is good enough. Uh, do I have any activist blood in me, you know? Do I have the ability to paint dark things of world wars and of uh, conflict that we have plenty of now? You know, get a message across about how terrible the world is. And do that by painting pictures of it. And I, I thought, you know, if I want to be that, I have to be it in my own terms, and it has to be by doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I might get on the dark side once in a while, but uh, what I really want to do is to promote, let's say, beauty by doing beauty, or sanity by doing things that are sane, you know? Promote compassion by saying something that just speaks of compassion rather than the opposite. So that kind of just, I answered my own question on the way out, and I thought, yeah, that makes sense to me. That's what I'm doing. I'm an activist in the reverse, I guess. <laughs>